Today we will learn all about the springs. Like what are the different types of the spring. Also what are the important parameters of the spring. But most importantly how to make perfect selection of a spring. Because as a machine design engineer our role is not only limited to just use the spring in mechanism to get some amount of cushion. In some applications we have to also provide the exact amount of force, the exact amount of reaction force using the spring. And in that case our spring selection should be perfect otherwise mechanism won't function properly. What I mean to say? So let's understand it with very cool example. Let's say we have this very huge plastic reservoir and this is consist of two main plastic bodies top and the bottom. And to seal the leakage there is a rubber seal. But before final nut and bolting assembly we want to perform the leak testing over this assembly. So if there are any cracks or tiny hole in this molded plastic bodies we can reject it before final assembly. In this way we will not only be able to reject the faulty part but we will also save the cost and time of the final assembly of the faulty part. But to perform the leak testing before nut and bolting assembly we have to keep pressing the bottom and the top bodies and the seal together during the leak testing. So I have designed this pressing fixture and I am using a pneumatic cylinder to keep the plastic bodies pressed and also to operate the top pressing jig. But as this is a plastic bodies we cannot press it with a huge heavy load. Let's say we can apply up to maximum 50 kg of force. Means our top fixture weight should be less than 50 kg. But when I design this top fixture jig and as the size of component is too large it's 860 by 730 mm. So the pressing jig weight was approximate 150 kg. So I changed the material of pressing jig from mild steel to aluminium. To bring down the weight of the jig under 50 kg but it's turned out to 100 kg. Again it's too much. Then I made lots of cut in jig here and there. But still the weight could only reach to 80 kg. Moreover to lift this pressing jig I have to use a pneumatic cylinder which should have force capacity more than 80 kg. So I had chosen a pneumatic cylinder for capacity 100 kg at 5 bar pressure. Even though I don't want to because now the applied force on plastic bodies will become weight of the jig which is 80 kg plus pneumatic slender force 100 kg means 180 kg. But we cannot apply the weight force more than 50 kg over these plastic bodies. Plastic body could be damaged. So what is the solution? Should we go for the servo actuator press? Yes, but cost would be increased at least 5 times. Or you might be suggest, I use why not use a load cell with the pneumatic slender and when pressing load reach 50 kg then suddenly stop the pneumatic slender using center port closed solenoid valve. So this is just a joke. We all know that solenoid valve never work precisely. And here just 1 to 2 mm of extra pressing will result into maximum force. Because the plastic bodies is not a squeezy, it's hard. So here what we should do is we should add the springs to adjust the pressing force. But where we should add the spring in this case? Option 1 we can simply add the spring in between pneumatic cylinder and this top pressing jig. And we can adjust the pneumatic cylinder force. But we cannot adjust the weight of top pressing jig. This will remain 80 kg which we don't want. So option 2. We can put this bottom jigs over the spring with guide rods. Something like this. And when the top jig with pneumatic cylinder with press the component. This bottom jig will start to press the spring. And also will goes down. And as the spring will get pressed. A spring will apply a reaction force. And more the spring is compressed, the greater the reaction force of the spring will exert. So we can provide a stopper or fixed hard stopper to stop the pneumatic cylinder stroke after a certain level where the spring is compressed so much 
that a spring exerts a reaction force of approximately 50 kg. Means we are using this pneumatic cylinder just to up and down this top pressing jig and we are applying the pressing force using the springs from bottom because the direction of force is doesn't matter in this case. Interesting. So now our main problem is to we have to select a spring size which can apply 50 kg of force when it get compressed up to a certain limit up to a certain length. So how to calculate the spring size? The length of the spring, diameter of the spring, diameter of the spring wire and also how much spring should be get compressed to achieve 50 kg of force, reaction force. And my friend this was the intro of this video and now the main part is coming that how to make the selection of a spring for this example. But the spring application is not only limited to this kind of application. We use the spring in many applications and also there are many types of a spring. So before starting the selection procedure of a spring for this application, first we will deeply understand that how exactly a spring works. Like how to calculate the spring reaction force and also the technical parameters related to the spring. But if you are already aware with the spring technical terms and all the calculations, then you can directly jump to the solution of this example. So let's start from very basic. What is the spring? So we can say the spring is elastic but largely rigid coil form component that can return into shape after being compressed or extend because of elastic potential energy. Just like a bow, a dhanus, when we pull the string, the bow absorbs the elastic potential energy. And when we release the string, it's bring back to its initial shape and the arrows throws away. In other words, a spring is a flexible element which used to exert a force or torque and at the same time to store the energy. The force can be linear push and pull or it can be radial depending on the shape of the spring. Like a simple helical compression spring which is designed to exert the force when it get linearly pushed means compressed. Initially the coil of the spring is spaced from each other so they can be compressed. And for linear extension there is a tension spring which is designed to exert a force when it get linearly pulled. And initially the coil of these springs are close to each other so they can be extended. And there are also the spring which exert the torque, torsional spring that works by twisting its one end along its axis. When it twisted, it exert the torque in opposite direction, proportional to the amount of angle it twisted. For example, we can see it in mouse trap, but I personally don't like mouse trap. Also the spiral shape spring, which we use in clock and the toy. And for the heavy load applications like car and truck suspension, leaf spring are used. And also the disc spring which we use as a washer and there are many more. But in machine design we mostly use the compression spring and the tension spring. And now let's understand that how much potential energy a spring is stored and apply as a reaction force. So as per the Hooke's law, the force with which the spring pushed back is linearly proportional to the distance from its equilibrium length within the spring material elastic limit. Means the spring force reaction F is equal to the spring constant or we can say force constant of a spring K into change in length of a spring X. And as the length of a spring is decreasing after the pressing, so we multiply with minus sign which indicates the direction of force is opposite to the displacement. For example, let's say if the spring constant K of a compression spring is 5 Newton per mm, means if we will press the spring by 5 mm, then this spring will apply 5 into 5, 25 Newton as a reaction force. 
if we will press even further let's say 10 mm then the reaction force will become 5 into 10 50 newton likewise if the spring constant k is now let's say 10 newton mm then only after pressing the 5 mm the reaction force will become 10 into 5 means 50 newton and after pressing the spring by 10 mm the reaction force will become 10 into 10 100 newton so we can say the spring constant also indicates the stiffness of a spring and the spring constant k depends on the multiples parameter of the spring which are mainly construction of a spring and the material of a spring like overall diameter of the spring diameter of a spring wire and also the material and its treatment also the shape and design of a spring and there are series of formulas which defines the relation between the spring constant k and the other parameters of the spring means we can calculate and design the spring but as a machine design engineer i have never ever had to use this formula because i am not a spring design engineer i don't have to design and manufacture the spring it's just like i don't have to design a pneumatic cylinder we just make the selection of pneumatic cylinder as per our machine design so same in case of a spring we don't have to design the spring we just have to make the selection of a spring from manufacturer catalog as per our machine design as per our requirement and to make the selection of a spring we should have at least some inputs our requirement inputs like required a spring constant required a spring deflection and the required diameter of a spring and also what should be the maximum and minimum length of a spring and we don't have to care about what would be the spring wire diameter or what would be the shape of the wire or what kind of material treatment they do in manufacturing or what steel grade they are using to achieve the defined spring constant we just have to verify that our selected spring should fully fill out our functional requirement so first let's understand these input parameters the first is a spring constant k which we already understood the value of k represent the stiffness of a spring means how much a spring exert the force versus how much we press or extend the spring but we can press a spring only up to certain limit where all the coils touch each other and the spring will become like a solid and we call this length the solid length of the spring so we can say the length of a spring remains after maximum deflection is called a spring solid length and we can check the solid length of the spring for given a spring length and the spring constant in catalog and the amount of force or spring applies at maximum deflection means that at solid length we call it maximum spring force which we can also check in manufacturer catalog third parameter is the spring deflection ratio which we denote as a percentage of a spring free length l like l into 40 percent or l into 60 percent it means let's say a spring free length is 100 mm a spring free length means the length of a spring when we do not apply any amount of force except gravitational force gravitational force is applying everywhere on earth all the time so so let's say if we will choose the spring of 60 percent deflection means we can press the spring up to 100 into 60 percent means up to 60 mm and at 60 mm a spring will reach its solid length means the solid length is 100 minus 60 means 40 mm means in high deflection a spring a spring coils will be more spaced to the each other at its free length of course and the main benefit of the high deflection springs is it take less space in height for the same diameter and for the same spring constant k but it's little costly and we cannot found it in local market and the other parameters of the springs like internal diameter outer diameter wire diameter pitch of the coil which are the same as its name suggests and the mean diameter of the spring and the ratio of the mean diameter of the spring and the wire diameter of the spring called a spring index 
and a spring index value should be in range of 5 to 12. Otherwise, a spring forming will be difficult. Also, the coil pitch angle should be less than 12 mm. Otherwise, undesirable compressive stress would be developed in a spring coil. And these are just good to know knowledge. And the typical material we use in springs are the high carbon steel, stainless steel, also the copper alloy. Also, we have to understand that if compression springs is compressed, its diameter extend. And when we extend the tension spring, its diameters reduce. So, as we mostly guide the spring with shafts, so in springs, there should be appropriate clearance between the shaft and the spring internal diameter. So, these are all the parameters we should must know to do the selection of a spring. So, let's just start the selection of a spring for this example. And the first and very basic step of any design engineering is convert the concept into form of data. So, what are the pressing load of this spring? The first is weight of the top fixture, which is 80 kg. Second is pneumatic cylinder pressing force, which is 100 kg. Means in total, it's 180 kgf, means 180 g, means 180 into 9.81 means 1765.8 Newton. But here we have to understand a very important thing that we are stopping the top jig with the hard stopper. And when this is stopped, then it doesn't matter how much this load is. It's 180 kg or 280 kg. This complete top jig will act like just an a stopper from the top for this plastic component. And the applies load over the component is only from the bottom the spring reaction force depending on how much a spring get pressed by the top jig just before it is stopped by the hard stopper which we want 50 kg of force means 50 g 490.5 newton and just for side note the applying force of this top jig which is 180 kg in this case, should not be less than 50 kg, which cannot possible because of top jig weight is itself 80 kg. Otherwise, the spring cannot be get pressed by 50 kg. I hope you got my point. And now I want your closer attention. As we can see, we have to set the stopper at very specific level where a spring should get enough press and get loaded with 50 kg of force. So, in this equation, the Hooke's law equation, we have the desired force, 50 kg up, means 490.5 Newton. But we don't have either a spring constant K or the required deflection, X, means we don't know that where we should set the stopper level. So, here we have to assume one parameters, either a spring constant or the deflection. So, I would like to assume the deflection, X, means required deflection in a spring. And on the basis of x, I would like to calculate k. So, for example, if the x is 20 mm, means we will set the stopper at a level where a spring will get pressed by 20 mm, means at zero pressing, where the top jig will just touch the component, a spring reaction force would be zero. And when the spring will get pressed all by 20 mm, the spring reaction force should be 50 kgf. 490.5 Newton means the spring constant of the spring should be 490.5 Newton divided by 20 means 24.52 Newton mm easy fiji but here we are missing very important thing that the load of our spring is not only the pressing load there is also a initial weight load of the bottom fixer and the component so, let's say the bottom fixer weight is 120 kg and the component weight is let's say 15 kg. Means the total initial weight over the spring is 120 plus 15, 135 kg. Means 1324.35 Newton. And also we are going to support this fixer with four identical springs. So, on each individual spring, 
the initial force will become 1324.35 divided by 4 means 331.08 newton approximately and the applied pressing force will also get divided by the 4 for each individual spring and it will become 490.5 divided by 4 122.62 newton only so the total load over an individual spring will become 331.08 plus 122.62 means 453.7 newton and we want the deflection 20 mm means the spring constant k now will become 453.7 divided by 20 means 22.68 newton per mm but this is very big mistake because here the 331.08 newton is initial fixed load over a spring which will permanently keep deflecting the spring up to a certain level and will not apply any reaction force over the component. The spring reaction force over the component will only apply if something will press the component from its top. So after permanent deflection when we will further press the spring from the top of the component then a spring will apply a reaction force and we want to press the spring by only 20 mm over the pressing load which is only 122.62 newton for each spring. So our required spring constant will become 122.62 newton divided by 20 mm means 6.131 newton per mm. So now we have to select the spring constant closer to 6.131 newton per mm. And you might be say that Ayush, why you consider the deflection 20 mm? Why not 2 to 5 mm or 50 mm? So there is no such exact region, but you can think like this. Let's say we are using M16 stopper adjusting bolt and M16 bolt pitch is 2 mm means one turn of the stopper bolt will adjust 2 mm and in terms of force adjustment in one turn the spring force will increase or decrease by 2 into 6.131 newton means 12.26 newton so if we will turn the bolt 10 times so it will adjust 20 mm means 20 into 6.131 means 122.62 newton which is our required pressing force and this 10 times turning adjustment of a stopper bolt is kind of sweet spot for me because let's say if you want to adjust the same amount of force within 15 mm then you have to do the 25 turns of the stopper bolt <laughs> which might be tiring but in this case the spring constant will become 122.62 divided by 50 means 4.25 newton mm and also i don't want to adjust the whole required pressing force only in one or two turn because i will lose the precision control of our force regulation what i mean to say it means if i would like to adjust the total pressing force in only two turns means within 4 mm means we have to consider the spring constant 122.62 divided by 4 mm means 30.65 newton mm newton per mm means at one turn of a stopper bolt a spring will increase or decrease 30.65 divided by 2 15.3 newton means i have to precisely manage the both side of a stopper which is quite difficult Look, I am not saying that you have to always consider the 20 mm of the adjustment in a stopper bolt because it depends on many factors like amount of the load, also how precisely you want to control the force regulation and also what is the bolt size and the spring constant value of the spring or we may have to change the spring constant if we will not find the spring constant for the required diameter of the spring. So let's say we are using the guide rod of diameter 30 mm so we have to select the spring internal diameter 30 mm or more than 30 mm and the spring constant is 6.131 newton per mm but to select the spring we should also have the total deflection 
and the free length of the spring. And you might be wondering that Ayos, we have already the spring deflection 20 mm as you have assumed. So no, this is only pressing deflection but there is also initial loading. So we have to also consider the initial deflection. Are you getting frustrated? So don't worry, we will simplify all these calculations in very simple steps later in this video. So initial load on individual spring is 331.08 Newton and as our calculated spring constant is 6.131 Newton per mm, so initial deflection on each spring will be 331.08 divided by 6.131 mm means 54 mm. So the total deflection will become 54 plus 20 mm, approximately 74 mm. So let's refer the spring catalog. Here I am referring a Misumi catalog. You can choose any manufacturer up to you and your company. And we can see the spring are categorized as the percentage deflection. So let's say I want to select the spring with 50% deflection. And for the diameter, internal diameter, 30 mm, there is 31 mm. Completely fine. And the spring constant closer to 6.131 is 6.13. Are you kidding? Look, this is just a coincidence. Anyway, for this spring, the allowable maximum deflection is 96 mm, which is okay for our application. Because in our application, the required deflection, the needed deflection is only 74 mm. So select this one. But here is a thing. Let's say for some region, we want to go with a spring constant 9.81 Newton per mm. So the available length of a spring is only 100 mm. And the allowable deflection according to the percentage deflection is only 60 mm. So it doesn't mean that we cannot use this spring. We can use two springs, one upon one. So the 60 plus 60, 120 mm deflection. But you have to use the two springs and also the spring total length would be 100 plus 100, 200 mm. Means this will be not optimum selection. Anyway, so select this one. So, so we will put this spring at the bottom of the fixture. And at the very first, a spring will get pressed by the bottom fixture weight. 120 by 4. 30 kg on each spring 294.3 Newton. At the spring constant 6.13 it will deflect the spring by 48 mm. And when we will load the component the weight is 15 kg means 3.75 kg. 36.7 Newton on each spring means 6 mm deflection will add after component loading and it will go 48 plus 6 54 mm. And now let's bring down the top jig and just touch this with the component. And after this, at 20 mm of the gap, we will set the stopper bolt, something like this. And now the top jig could press up to 20 mm. And also add a nut with a stopper bolt and leave the 5 to 10 mm gap. So further we will have a room to increase the placing load if needed. So just for the quick recap. Step 1. Deeply understand the application. Like why exactly you want to use the spring? What are the functions you want to achieve with the spring? What is the pressing load over the spring? And what are the note of pressing load over the spring in a particular application? Like in this example, the pneumatic cylinder force was the not the pressing load. Also understand the initial pressing load. Otherwise, you will incorrectly calculate the spring required deflection. Step 2. Define the required spring deflection as per the application. In this application, deflection of a spring was based on the hard stopper adjustment. But in many applications, the required deflection could be just a stroke length of the spring of the actuator. Step 3. Calculate the total deflection including initial deflection of the spring. Step 4. Calculate the spring constant as per the pressing or the pulling load and the required deflection of the spring. Step 5. Calculate the total length of the spring as per the selected spring deflection ratio 
or you can also check in the catalog. The final step 6. Select the spring from manufacturer catalog. As per the spring diameter, spring constant and allowable deflection. Or you can also cut the length of a spring or you can also use the multiple springs and this is it for this video and the main motive of making this video in mind strumming fashion is to just show you that how to think step by step in machine design because there is no any fixed and defined steps for every situation we are the design engineers and we define the steps and this is what I am doing with this channel, defining the complex problem in simple steps with you. And I hope you found this video useful. So please give us a like and also let us know in comment. Or if you want to see more such case study type videos, please let us know in comment. And thank you so much for the watching.